Hi everybody, welcome back to a new PyTorch tutorial. Today I want to show you the PyTorch dataset and data loader classes. So far our code looked something like this. So we had a data set that we loaded somehow, for example from a CSV file. And then we had our training loop that looped over the number of epochs. And then we optimized our model based on the whole data set. So this might be very time consuming if we did gradient calculations on the whole training data. So a better way for large data sets is to divide the samples into so-called smaller batches. And then our training loop looks something like this. So we loop over the epochs again and then we do another loop and loop over all the batches. And then we get the X and Y batch samples and do the optimization based only on those batches. So now if we use the built-in dataset and data loader classes from PyTorch, then PyTorch can do, can do the batch calculations and iterations for us. So it's very easy to use. And now I want to show you how we can use the, these classes. But before we jump to the code, let's quickly talk about some terms when we talk about batch training. So first, uh, one epoch means one complete forward and backward pass of all the training samples. And one, the batch size is the number of training samples in one forward and one backward pass. And the number of iterations is the number of passes where each pass uses the batch size number of samples. So here we have an example. If we have 100 samples and our batch size is 20, then we have five iterations for one epoch because 100 divided by 20 is five. So yeah, that's what we should know. And now let's jump to the code. So first I already implemented some modules that we need. So torch, of course, then also torch vision. And then from torch.utils.data, we import data set and data loader. So the classes I just talked about, then let's also import numpy and math. And now we can start uh, implementing our own custom data set. So let's call this wine data set. And this must inherit data set. And then we have to implement three things. So we have to implement the init uh, with self. So here we do some data loading, for example. And then we also must implement the double underscore get item method, which gets self and an index. So this will allow for indexing later. So we can call data set with an index zero, for example. And then we also must implement the lang method, uh, which only has self. And then this will allow that we can call lang of our data set. So now let's start. So in our case, we want to look at the wine data set. So I have the CSV file here and I also put this in my GitHub uh, repository. So you can check that out here. And so the data set looks like this. So the first row is the header. And here we want to calculate or to predict the wine categories. So we have three different wine categories, one, two, and three. And the class label is in the very first column. And then all the other columns are the features. So let's load this and split our uh, columns into X and Y. So here we can say X, Y equals numpy dot load txt. And here I must specify the file name. So this is in the data folder and then I have a wine folder and then it's called wine.csv. Then let's also give a delimiter equals a comma here because this is a comma separated file. Then let's also give it a data type. Uh, so let's say data type equals numpy.flow32. And let's also say skip rows equals one. So we want to skip the first row because this is our header. And now let's split 
our whole data set into x and y. So we say self.x equals, and here we can use slicing, so x, y, and we want to have all the samples, and then we don't want the very first column, so we want to start at, at the column number one, and then go all the way to the end. So this will give us the x, and then self.y equals x, y, off. And here again, we want all the samples, but only the very first column. And we put this in another array here, so that we have the size number of samples by one. So this will make it easier later for some calculations. Um, so yeah, and let's also convert this to a tensor. So we can say torch dot from numpy, and then give this to our um, our, uh, to the function here. So torch dot from numpy. So we don't. Uh, we do not need this, but uh, we can do it. We can also convert it later, but we can do it right here. So let's do this. And let's also get the number of samples. So let's say self dot number of samples equals x y dot shape and then zero. So the first dimension is the number of samples. And then we can uh, return this right here and this is our whole length function so return self dot number of samples and here we can also implement this in one line so we can say return self dot x of this index and then self dot y of this index so this will return a tuple and yeah now we are done so this is our data set that we just implemented and now let's create this data set so let's say data set equals wine data set and now let's have a look at this data set so now we can say first data equals data set and now we can use indexing so let's have a look at the very first sample and now let's unpack this into features and labels like this. So this is first data. And now let's print the features and also print the labels to see if this is working. And yeah, so we have one uh, feature column or only one row. So this is one row vector. And then the label, so the label one in this case, and yeah, so this is how we get the data set. And now let's see how we use a data loader. So we can say data loader equals the built in data loader class. And then we pass, we say data set equals this data set. And then we can also give this a batch size. So batch size equals, let's say four in this case, then let's say shuffle equals true, which is very useful for training. And this, so this will shuffle the data. And then we also say num workers equals two. So you don't need to do this, but um, this might make loading faster because it's using multiple sub processes now. And yeah, so now let's see how we can use this data loader object. So now we can convert this to a iterate iterator. So let's say data iter equals um, iter data loader. And then we can call the next function. So we can say data equals data iter dot next. And then we can all uh, again unpack this by saying features and labels equals data. And now let's print the features and the labels if, to see if this is working. And yeah, so here we have it. And 
Here in this case, I specify specified the batch size to four. This is why we see four different um, feature vectors here. And then also for each feature vector, the class, so four class labels in our labels vector or labels tensor. And now we also can iterate over the whole data loader so and not only get the next item so now let's do a dummy training loop so let's specify some hyperparameters so let's say num epochs equal epochs equals two and then let's get the total number of samples. So total samples equals length of our data set. And now let's get the number of iterations in one epoch. So this is um, the total number of samples divided by the batch size. So divided by four. And then we also have to, th to seal this, so math seal um, this. And now let's print our total samples and the number of iterations. And then we see we have 178 samples and 45 iterations. So now let's do our loop. So let's say for epoch in range number of epochs and now we do the second loop and loop over the train loader so let's say for i and here we can um, already unpack this by saying inputs and labels in enumerate and here we only put in the how did we call it data loader so this is all we have to do. And now this enumerate function will give us the index and then also the inputs and the labels here, which is already unpacked. Um, and now what we should do typically in our training is to do our forward and then our backward pass and then update our weights. So this is just a dummy example. So in this case, I only want to print some information about our batch that we have here. So let's say if i plus one modulo five equals equals zero. So every fifth step, we want to print some information. So let's print epoch. And here let's print the current epoch and then all um, epochs so here let's say num epochs and then let's also print the current step so step and this is i plus one and then the total steps so this is uh, n iterations here and then let's also uh, print some information about our inputs. So inputs and let's say here we want to print inputs dot shape only. And yeah, now let's run this to see if this is working. And yeah, so here we see our print statements. So we see that we have two epochs. And in every epoch, we have 45 steps and every fifth step, we print some information. And we also see that our tensor is four by 13. So we have our batch size is four and then 30 different features in each batch. And yeah, so that's how we use the data set and the data loader classes. And then we can very easily get uh, single batch single batches and yeah of course uh, PyTorch also has some already built-in data sets so for example from torchvision.datasets.mnist we get the famous mnist data set 
And for example, we can also get the fashion MNIST data set um, or the Cypher uh, data set or the Coco data set. And yeah, so the MNIST data set is one that we will use in one of the next tutorials. And for now, this is what I wanted to show you about the data set and data loader classes. I hope you liked it and please subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.